my name is Glenn. I work with Delta Scientific Corporation. I am the chief training instructor here at Delta, and I'm here to give you a brief demonstration on Delta 501, DSC 501 maintenance. So all of our maintenance and service operations, as well as diagnosis and uh, maintenance cycles, are in these manuals. So please read your manuals. So now we're going to give you a brief overview of the basic system components. This is one of our demo units. This is exactly what you have in the concrete at your facility, but we use this one for demonstration purposes. What I'm going to demonstrate here is some of the proper maintenance techniques and things that should be done at your facility. First, I'm going to demonstrate the installation of one of the safety bars. So you take this, which is normally stored either inside the barrier or inside the HPU cabinet, and you install it right here, and it's no reason to torque it. There's one for each side of the barrier. The next thing I would do after I have the safety bars installed into the barrier is I would come to the HPO. I would disconnect the power. You can lock out and tag out as necessary. And then I'm going to bleed off the pressure with this bleed off valve down here at the bottom. It should not require tools to operate this. You will hear a hissing sound and you will observe the pressure gauge dropping. This is going to put the barrier in a safe state to work with. Now that our hydraulic power unit is down to zero pressure, it's safe to work with the barrier. So now I'm going to give you a tour on the main components of the barrier itself. So we have the top plate here. And this weighs approximately 3,800 to 4,500 pounds. We've got the front visibility panels that are usually illuminated with lights of one or two different styles. We have these big heavy duty chains in the front. This is key to the stopping power of this barrier. This prevents the barrier from lifting over as well as it helps to trap the vehicle when the vehicle impacts these chains. It will pull the top plate down. The framework of this is always concreted in and the intersection here that is hollow because this is our demonstration unit is also filled with concrete and rebar. When the system's installed here, there may also be, in some colder climates, a snow melting heater mounted to this concrete here. Now with the safety bars installed and the barrier in place, I could safely get inside here and do my maintenance. Now one of the main components of this is the hydraulic cylinders. These hydraulic cylinders are capable of lifting this plate in approximately one and a half seconds based on our EFO system. These hydraulic cylinders should be inspected regularly for leakage. The hydraulic cylinders clevis pins should also be inspected and the bushings for them should be inspected. So here we have the front, front chain well. The chains will drop in here, the front visibility panel will rest in here we have provisions for drainage. The drainage is important to in maintenance with this barrier. If it fills up with leaves and debris, it will not drain water out very well, so you have to keep the barrier free of debris. So we have a hinge system on this that helps with the crash rating. So there's bearing blocks along the back edge here, and they do need to be inspected periodically for tightness, and we will demonstrate how to check. Now that the hydraulic power unit is back up to pressure, it is now safe to remove the safety bars. Periodically, we need to check the tightness of the bearing blocks. They should be torqued to 45 foot-pounds. Another spot that needs to be inspected and cleaned regularly is this hinge area to prevent debris buildup. Debris can uh, store moisture which can 
contribute to the rusting factor as well as it can cause binding in this hinge system. have the spin-on filter. This should be replaced regularly to keep the hydraulic system clean. We inspect our hydraulic power unit for leaks, do any repairs that are necessary to fix those leaks, clean up the unit, and now would be a good time to inspect the oil level and the condition of the oil. Clean oil is necessary to keep this system up and working properly. We can check for operation mechanically with our directional valves. We can inspect our pump itself, the couplers, the hydraulic hoses, and the motor operation. So periodically we do need to change the oil. So there is a clean out access panel here where we can access the 100 micron pickup screen that prevents large debris from entering the pump. We also have to change the spin on filters regularly and in some systems we have a high pressure filter. This also needs replaced regularly. While we have the oil out, we make sure we clean out the tank completely to remove any sediment from the bottom. Now your manual will show you frequency of maintenance based on your conditions at your site and your location. You may have a higher maintenance requirement that is what it's laid out. This is just a guideline. <laughs> In the event of a power outage, you can still operate the barriers. Use this hand pump to bring up pressure, and you manually shift this directional valve through the little circle in the center using a small object like a screwdriver, and the barrier will climb. The purpose of this video is to make sure you're aware that proper maintenance will prolong the life of your barrier system. It will also make sure that it is up and working when you need it. Keep your facility protected. You do need to make sure that properly trained professionals do the maintenance on this. You can consult the manual for the proper maintenance intervals. If you do have any questions, feel free to contact Delta Scientific Corporation.